Hey everybody, it's Brandon, the Weekend Cruiser, where I go on a weekend cruise just about every weekend. And I'm once again here in Perfect Day at Coco Cay, part of the Berry Islands in the Bahamas to give you a full walking tour. I'm gonna go ahead and jump in it. I'm gonna see how much I, I'll talk during this. I might speed up the video from time to time, just if there's downtown or lulls, it is a lot of walking. So hang with me and let's check out Perfect Day Coco Cay. Now, when you come to Perfect Day Coco Cay, you're gonna come to the pier, which we are super, super thankful to have. And you have the option of boarding the tram that is here. Those are these little golf cart shuttles that you see driving around. They are for people that need a little bit of assistance reaching the main island. This pier is not a short walk, you all. So if you do have problems or issues with mobility, make sure you're jumping on one of these shuttles. They have seats where you can see where the tram sign is. They'll line you up and they run pretty frequently. This is one of two trams that are offered on the island. Today, you're going to see that we've got on the left side, uh, the Freedom of the Seas, where I am currently at. And on the right side, you've got Independence of the Seas, a sister ship to Freedom. So all in all, you're looking at probably about 8,000 people on the island today. And many of you have often commented on my video, Brandon, where are all the people at? Now, this video is being shot about 3.30 in the afternoon. I say that it could be closer to 4 o'clock. All aboard is 4.30 for Independence and 5 p.m. for Freedom of the Seas. So if you're coming to Perfect Day at Coca Cay, make sure you know which one is yours. Just cause somebody else is still in the swim up bar or at the pool, um, ordering drinks does not mean that you should not be heading back to your ship at that exact moment. So make sure you listen out for the announcements and hear what all is going on. But if you want to see where all the people are, here they are. They are heading back to the ship. So you see that I am going counter to all of these folks. So I'm going to make up for all my videos. and I'm probably going to show you a couple of thousand people heading back here. I will also say that, you know, a lot of people are staying out here later today because this morning was rainy. I am here during the rainy season and the morning was kind of a little bit of a washout. So most people did not get off the ship until noon, one o'clock to head over to the island. So you're gonna have a lot more people staying later on. You'll also see there's a little bit of a bottleneck up here where we are approaching. So as you walk through the pier, there is going to be a security entrance or gate that you're gonna need to go through um, to get onto Coco Cay and then to return to Coco Cay. So in this case, I am walking into Coco Cay, so I don't need to show any identification or show my set cell card um, to the agents that are working here. But when you come back, you will need to show them your set cell card to make sure you can get onto the ship. That's also why you see these golf cart shuttles stopped over here on the right hand side, because they are showing their card to make sure that they can get back onto the ship. As you walk through here, you'll see that it is a beautiful photo opportunity. You're also gonna see or start to see a lot of the photo team from your cruise ship is gonna be out here to take your picture with the ship in the background. One of my personal favorite spots to take a photo. So if you are getting the photo package or you're like me and you have status with Royal Caribbean and you're gonna get a free picture, this is a great place to do that. Make sure, however, you're finding somebody from your ship. If I was to walk over to somebody on the Independence and say, hey, take my picture, it, they can take it, but they're not gonna pull me up in their system to tag it to my account for me to then get the picture on Freedom of the Sea. So make sure if you're talking to anybody that's a photographer here, that they are with your ship. You're also gonna see some people over here um, on the left looking over the side. So first of all, you see that there's yellow lines on both sides of the pier. We're not technically supposed to go on the other side of those, especially on this right hand side. That's where the shuttle shuttles are going to be running and, you know, don't want you to get hit by one of those. But on the left hand side, they're a little bit more lenient, allowing you to walk up to the edge and look down. The water there is crystal clear. It is always very pretty. And chances of you seeing some colorful fish or fishes floating around is really, really high. I think the fish know that we're coming back on the ship or we're leaving the ship and they always put on a good time for us. You'll also see the Perfect Day Coco K sign up here. And I always kind of think that it's a shame they don't have them together because it's, I find it really difficult to get a picture with both of these words in the camera together unless I'm on the ship, you know, up high where I can actually get that kind of an angle. But they are still great pictures. If you want to just get Coco K behind it, you can certainly do that here as well. 
Coming into Coco Cay, you'll see Thrill Water Park is, you know, high and proud over there. And you're gonna start seeing what all this place really offers. Starting out with our Junkano dancers. They're always gonna be performing for you here at the entrance or exit of Coco Cay. And they put on a really, really good show. The entertainment on the ship, led by an entertainment director, not a crew director, but an entertainment director, is always top notch. You're gonna see over on the right-hand side, this is where your second shuttle is gonna pick up. So if you're taking that first shuttle, it's also gonna drop you off down that hallway, and then the second shuttle will take you to South Beach, and I'll show you where that ends up going. This is Thrill Water Park. It is huge, and you've got Jill's Galleon there for the kiddos to enjoy. Make sure you're also gonna check out the map. So if you wanna know where to go, Coco K, the way I describe it, is a circle. It's got an interior piece and then an exterior piece. Exterior, you're gonna have all of your beaches, Interior, you're gonna have your excursions and things that you can do. So make sure you're checking it all out. You're also gonna normally have some kind of a photo prop that they have made right here outside of Captain Jack's. Captain Jack's is gonna be that building right there that we're not gonna walk into today, but that's where you can find Captain Jack and Captain Jill performing. And they put on a really great show. They've had many people come through there and they're always really good entertainers. It's also a great bar to go and sit at and relax that is sheltered, and it's not too far from the ship. So if you do have mobility issues, don't want to go too far, but want to say that you got off in Coco Cay, highly recommend Captain Jack's. They're also going to have some food that is available there for an additional charge. It's called Wings and Things. So I think they go for $7.99, though they may have raised the prices recently. The wings are actually pretty decent over there, but know that it is an upcharge from what you're going to pay elsewhere or other places. Here you're starting to see more of the breadth of Coco Cay and what all there is to do here. And so this here is going to be Harbor Beach and Splash Away Bay that you're looking at there. On the other side of it though is another favorite photo opportunity of mine. Get those ships in the background. You see a lot of people taking pictures here. This is a beautiful place to take pictures and get the ship in the background. Hopefully your ship is on this side of you so that you can get it more into focus but it is a great spot to take. You'll also see that this bridge here is paved. So they've got, in between the outer and inner circle of Coco Cay, I'll call it, there is complete pavement. So again, mobility devices work really well on this. And it connects all the way around the inner and outer circle, but doesn't really go into any of them except for Oasis Lagoon. That's the only inside yes. spot that yeah. um, stays fully the paved. The weekend cruiser. You'll see here again, there sure, are plenty of signs away. around Look here. Look for the walking So we the just came from here. This young lady wants to be famous on YouTube. Yeah. She asked me to put her in, so boom, there you go. Hope you see it. Comment down below if you did. Um, but there's plenty of signs here on Coco K to tell you where you want to go, but you do need to know the name of where you're going to go. The map of Coco K is also going to be available on the Royal Caribbean app. So if you want to check that out, that'll give you some advice on where you can go. You're going to start to see some shops. So the one on the left there was a Royal Caribbean shop, but then you've got hair braiding stations as well, something very popular to do in the Bahamas. You don't have to wait to get to Nassau to do that, especially if you're on a three-night sailing. You might want to go and get your hair braided on day two if you're here on Saturday versus waiting until the last day of the cruise on Sunday to get it done. Here you're going to have the first beach that you're going to come to. There is no beach over here. It is a perfect spot to overlook the ships. But nobody ever sits there because there is nothing to do except look at the ships. I like going there to get out of the way, but there's not a lot to do. You're also going to see a lot of chairs here. This is a section that they continue to add chairs that you can sit at um, to enjoy the beach. So even if there's two Oasis class ships here and you're literally with 12,000 other people, I promise you, you're going to get a chair. You may be 20 rows back in this section, but <laughs> you're going to have a chair. You're also going to see in the distance there, they got a little gazebo that was set up earlier today for any kind of ceremony you might want to do. So there are a ton of weddings out there. And I love just like peeking in and seeing weddings and the happy folks getting married. It's such a good time. You're also going to see that if you're checking in for an excursion, you want to go snorkeling. They do have good snorkeling here. This is where you're going to come to to pick up those fins that you can rent. Though I normally bring my own if that's something I want to do. I'll throw this, the face mask in my snorkel gear in my back and we're good to go. You've also got first aid on the island. So not only do you have first aid um, on the ship, but you can get assistance needed on the actual island itself. 
From here, we're gonna cut into the straw market. So the hair braiding's on that other section. Here is where you can actually get some of the tchotchkes and knickknacks and things to remember your time at the Bahamas, specifically at Coco Cay. And they've got some really cool shirts, colorful items. If you have forgotten sunscreen, I also recommend you buy it here. They will certainly sell it to you at the port merchant on the ship, but for probably twice as much. You can get it much cheaper here. They're also gonna have toys for the kids. So if your kids are not entertained, maybe you didn't get the Thrill Water Park package and you know they're yelling at the top of the lungs that everybody else is having fun and they're not, you can bring them here, give them, go shopping, buy probably 10 things for the price that you would have paid for um, the Thrill Water Park. So not a bad value and something really, really cool to do. So I'm gonna take you by the bar here. This is a bar that I don't know that I've ever stayed at too terribly much. It is the Wacky Seagull. But as you see, it is fully shaded. It's overlooking the water. I think it's underutilized. If you're looking for a more relaxing space, it is a great spot for you to go to. You'll also notice that all of the chairs, for the most part, have an umbrella to it, something I am very thankful for. And you do not have to pay extra for a chair or an umbrella in Coco Cay. Those are included with the price. However, if you can see down there towards the end, you'll see some of the day beds and cabanas. Those are an additional price. So the chairs that you're gonna see the most of that we're looking at now, those will be complimentary. One thing you're also gonna take note of is that sign we just saw to the left there. That is the sign letting you know what the flags at the lifeguard stand are gonna be. So today was purple and purple has been up a lot recently, meaning that there is marine life in the water. Predominantly, it's gonna be jellyfish. You are gonna see some small little nerf sharks, um, some sea turtles, things like that. Stingrays come by here. For the most part, I've never heard of an incident happening. Um, so I think that you're good to go. I would say that jellyfish probably should be your biggest concern, not the shark. Chill Beach here. We are in the middle of the three chill beaches. So this is the best place that we're looking at to go snorkeling. Those rocks right there is where all the colorful fish really hang out. And so if you wanna go snorkeling, go out in the middle section, go around these rocks, and then swim out a little bit further. They're gonna have a lifeguard further out as well to watch you, but they've buried some different items out there and they've really made it interesting for fish to come out there and give you something to look at. You'll also be able to take a break on some of the platforms that are out there. So they are swim up platforms. They're further out than they may look, so make sure that you are a good swimmer. If you are not a good swimmer though, You'll see here on the right that we do have life vests and they come in all shapes and sizes. So if you are a, not an infant, a child, if you are um, a teenager or an adult, they're gonna have a jacket, life jacket that will work for you. So know your swimming capabilities um, and don't take any risks. They've got lifeguards, but we try not to have the lifeguards work too terribly hard. On the right hand side was also the um, first restaurant or buffet that you'll be able to eat at. And I'll make a whole separate video on the food options that they're going to make there. So you've got a continuation of Chill Island. So you see some people like the back row, some people like the forward row. It's really up to you where you wanna go. It is a little bit quieter now because people are coming back to the tram. So this is the last tram station and this is the bigger tram. So if you remember where I was telling you the tram drops off at from the ship and then you can switch, this is that second tram and it is much larger and it will run all the way to this section going by South Beach. So this is its last stop. You'll also see that they've got a bar right there on the right. I think that it's just a cute little 1950s, I think, what do they call them? Airliner trailers? Airline, let me know in the comments. It is a, one of those silver bullets kind of trailers um, that people used to live in or still live in, I should say. Um, but they look really, really good and it's a fun place to get some drinks. If you have signed up for an excursion at Coco Cay, this is gonna be the spot for you. So you see that they've got the kayaks here. They've got all the different check-ins for it. The jet skis are gonna be there as well. And you're also gonna notice on the right side of that building, they're going to have um, lockers for you to use as well. So if you're going out on the jet skis, you're going kayaking, you don't want your things to get wet, you can lock them up. It is complimentary to use those lockers. There is not a fee to do that. This is also a really nice bar that is here. So if you're again looking somewhere to relax, I recommend this bar. Normally, I've never really seen a lot of people sitting out here, which I don't understand why. I think it's a super nice bar and you get to look over the water and the last section of Chill Island here. You're also gonna see those jet skis. That is a tour that my friends swear by. So it's the same tour every single time. You don't get the jet ski for 
you know, to do whatever you want to. They're going to give you a tour, but it is a really fun time. Um, they tell great stories and will take you all around the island and tell you about some of the history in this section of the island. So this here is a beach that I'll hang out every now and again. It is a slower beach um, because it's the end of the line. Like it is the absolute last stop. So a lot of people will not come here because it's just pretty far away, if you will. So it's in one of the far corners. So if you're coming here, it is a little bit of a walk or take that tram and don't be tempted to get off at the first one. Plan on where you want to go. Um, but this is one of my favorite beaches and I'll go out there and hang out in the water from time to time. You're also going to see coming up restrooms. So there are thankfully plenty of restrooms on, on Coco Cay Island. So whatever beach you may be at, restrooms are never that terribly far away, which is really nice. You're also going to see these hammocks throughout. Make sure you're grabbing a hammock early if you want one. They are tough to come by. They, I feel like they don't have as many as they used to, or maybe they've just moved them to where I haven't found them. But they do have a good number of hammocks um, that are super comfortable and make awesome pictures with their vibrant colors that come through. You're going to see some more of the day beds that you can rent out. So these are not part of the beach club. So we'll show you the Coco Cay Beach Club in a second. I'm not going to go into it, but I'll show you the entrance and what the overwater cabanas look like. But you see, there's even chairs behind here. So again, plenty of chairs. These have to look through the cabanas. So if you want to be up by the water, I'd say make sure you're getting off the ship 9 30, 10 o'clock in the morning. That's when people have done their breakfast, they've gotten wept, wrapped up, and they are heading off the ship. I used to say it was more like 10.30, but I think with more bigger ships, more two ships being here, people are getting off earlier. This is the first of three snack shacks that are also on the island. This is my favorite place to eat. I normally don't go to the buffet if I'm on the island. I will come here and get a grilled chicken sandwich. So, grilled chicken sandwich, not on their menu but they use grilled chicken for one of their salads. And so I just get them switch it over to a sandwich style. And that's what I'm able to eat. Some people swear by the funnel cakes there. Others swear by the secret sandwich, which is a sandwich with mozzarella sticks on it. So make sure you know what that is. They don't always know. You come into the sports complex. So if you're the type of person that needs activity in your life, you are not one who's going to just sit at the beach um, and relax. You've got Jenga, you've got, I don't know if that's considered human pinball or not pinball, but volley, billiards, billiards, I should say. You've got volleyball, connect four here that I used to play with my granny all the time. You've got checkerboards or not checkerboards, that's chess. You've got ping pong. I have no idea what this orange thing is here. I've looked at it a few times. I, I got nothing on what that is. And there's an attendant over here as well that's watching out for everything. So if you're not able to find a ping pong ball, a paddle, check with them and they'll be able to help you out. Interestingly enough, there are also um, little mini libraries on the island, which I think is super cool that you can check out and use. They've all got books inside of them. And you saw some um, four square nets over there, which I used to be a champ at when I was in elementary school. Still remember playing that when I was in 4-H club after school. Um, which was always a good time, and I did a really good job with it, shockingly. You'll see some of those hammocks, and this is going to wrap us around to another set of restrooms. And then on the other side of this, we're going to head into the Oasis Lagoon. But before we do that, directly on the other side of here, you can't see it really right now, is the Ocean Club. So you're looking directly at the pool. You can't see it. Same with the Ocean Club, you cannot see it. So they've done a really good job on this island on taking the commercial commercialization, if you will, and kind of talking it away, making it feel still like a tropical place by hiding everything. But that's your entrance right there to the Ocean Club or Coco Cay Beach Club that you can go to. Let them know when you're checking into the first trolley, that is where you're going to first tram, and they will get you on one that'll take you directly to the Ocean Club. I know people want to be first off the ship, so that they can get some of the best seating at the Ocean Club. If you were going there, not all seats are created the same. They've got some really comfortable seats directly beside of the pool that some people love. Some people want to be on that front row once again. Um, and so I highly recommend the Ocean Club. Check out the pricing for it though. It is a little on the pricey side sometimes. So if you can afford it, it is a really good time. The food over there, the lobster over there, fantastic. Bathrooms here, once again, you're, this is gonna be the closest restrooms 
or the Oasis Lagoon. So if you're coming to the Oasis Lagoon, this is gonna be your spot. They also have lockers there as well. So if you're somebody who's gonna put your stuff in a chair and then you're just gonna hang out in the pool the entire day, you're gonna be able to lock your stuff up so that you don't you know, worry about it getting stolen. I've never heard of that really happening on the island, but you know, there's 6,000 people here today, 8,000 people, it could absolutely happen. Here is the Oasis Lagoon. You see that it's paved, so it's easy to get around. And it's gonna start here with a walk down. So it is a sloped entrance, which I personally love. It's much more gentle to adjust to when you are getting into a cold pool. This pool is, I think they call it the largest pool in the Caribbean, and it is not heated. I know so many people come to the Caribbean islands of the Bahamas, which Bahamas is not technically Caribbean, depending on who you talk to, um, but they complain that it's not a heated pool. And I'm like, you don't see a lot of heated pools in the Caribbean. This one, not heated. It's also massive. Um, so you're not going to have this pool heated. It will be cold. These are some of the best kept secrets, which are the cabanas by the Oasis Lagoon. So if you want to be close to the party crowd, this is a louder environment here. They will play music. They have a DJ. That is a really cool spot to be. It is just behind these chairs. So easy access to the pool to go and come, but it's still gonna come with the benefits of having a cabana. You're also gonna see some of the alcoves here. This is my personal favorite spot to hang out because it gives me away from the bar a little bit and the umbrellas there offer some shade. These are also my favorite chairs because they overlook that, that overhang or that alcove and then gives me that perfect view directly to the bar so I can kind of see what's going on. I don't always want to be in the middle of everything out there. I don't need to be in the middle of it. I like being close to it, see what it's doing, and live vicariously through people that are there. If you do want easier steps to get directly into the pool, this is going to be your place to walk into the pool there. It's also, this is the um, swim up bar they call it, on the opposite side of the swim up section where they've got seats and stools in the water, you're going to have it on dry land as well. So it is dug out a little bit. So if you want the party, you want the energy of the swimming pool without the bathing suit, without getting wet, that's where you're going to go. This is also a smoker's nook right there. So if you are a smoker on the island, there are designated spots for you to smoke. I think there's a ton of them, though. I don't feel like they're hurting or lacking for areas where you can grab a quick smoke if that's something that you want to do. This is, you know, a more, I call this the kind of the family or friendly side of the Oasis Lagoon. It is still going to be loud because it's close to the music. You've got the chairs, you've got the hangouts in the pool, but you can play on the grass over there. I even see people that'll take their towels when it's really crowded. They'll go and hang out on the grass. And you've got these chairs, which I don't necessarily know whose body type these chairs are made for. I can hang out in one of these white chairs here for maybe five minutes and then I'm getting back pains and all sorts of issues. So, not my favorite spot whatsoever. You see that there's going to be another little mini library here. I think those are just you know, super neat that they've got those. If you forgot a book, you didn't bring your Kindle, um, great place to be able to grab a book and read. Now we're going to walk back towards Chill Grill, the buff one of the buffets, one of two buffets that's on the island. So if you look to the right, that's where our tram stop was that we saw just a moment ago. Just to give you some perspective on how we're walking you know, back into a middle section, um, of the island. So plenty of seating here. Be careful of the seagulls. If you turn your back for one moment, even if you are sitting there and they see you are not looking, they will grab your food. If you put your food down, then you go to the buffet to get something else, or maybe you go back and get your beverage afterwards. They will attack your food and they will take all of it. So make sure that you are not accidentally eating the seagulls while you are here. It is buffet style. They've got barbecue chicken. They've got tacos, corn on the cob, salads, potato salads, anything that you might find at your local cookout, you're going to find here. The last We've also family. got a bar and soft serve ice What's cream. She's still back. there until four o'clock today, four? which I found ah. interesting. Everybody else has packed up and gone home. They are back on the ship getting ready for dinner service. She's still there serving that soft serve ice cream. Most of the time you're going to find vanilla and chocolate. Every now and again, they're gonna have strawberry, which is my personal favorite, but it is tough to come by. So now we're going to walk over into Hideaway Bay. We are back on that inner walkway now that kind of separates what I call the inner section and the outer section of Coco Cay. And this is Hideaway Bay. This is the more family friendly of all of the beaches. And I say that because the water is a little less shallow. It doesn't drop off as quick. And there's also netting 
up by um, the, I guess that's a bridge going over to the cruise ships. That's going to allow your marine life to not come into this section. So if you're somebody who's scared of marine life that cannot make it through a net, such as a shark or a stingray, this is going to be the best bet for you to come to and enjoy. They've put some of these um, flotation devices out in the water. You saw those white rings. They've got mesh netting on the inside of those that you can set out, get some sun, and enjoy. Lifeguards are still here, so everywhere that you turn around this island, if there is water involved, you are going to find a lifeguard looking out for you and hoping. So if something should go wrong, they will certainly jump in to assist. There's also more bean bags on this section, so you'll see them a little bit throughout. But the bean bags are certainly on a first come, first serve basis. Though in the afternoon, they can get a little warm, so make sure that you're putting a towel over that if it is something you want to sit at on the end of the day. The next restaurant we're going to see here is Skipper's Grill. This is the second of the buffets. It is the closest one to the ship as well. Plenty of seating around here. Everywhere has an umbrella though. Depending on the time of day, it might not cover the entire table. The food in Skipper's Grill as well as Chill Grill is identical. So don't feel like you need to go to one or the other. It is the same exact setup, same design, same exact food. So whichever one you choose to go to, I just go to the closest one. Um, you're gonna find the same food. Different staff working it, but you're gonna find the same food. We're gonna come back over here onto, sometimes I call it the yellow brick road. Um, but we're gonna walk this and we're going to cut around the side of Skipper's Grill walking back. Over on the left, I'm showing you, that's where the pool's at. So again, completely hidden. You can't really see the pool. You would definitely be able to hear the pool. There's a lot of music that comes from the DJ booth at the pool, the Oasis Lagoon, but you can't necessarily always see it. You'll see here's the other side of Skipper's Grill, another restroom. So hopefully I've showed you all that there are plenty of restrooms here. They each have their own attendant, by the way, so they are actually kept really, really clean. Soft serve ice cream still being served. I should have got some, but trying to be good on the ship. Now again, I'm gonna walk through here just to show you what the buffet setup is like. Everybody's gone home at the end of the day, people are going back to the ship, but I'll make a whole nother video, a recent video, I do have an older one, that I can show you what this food is gonna look like and what my thoughts are on your best options to go with you. But this right here is gonna walk us back towards um, Captain Jack's, where you can get those wings, you can listen to Captain Jack and Captain Jill perform, but we're gonna cut over to the kitty area. And I always forget the name of the kitty area here, but it is a super great time. I guess that is actually called Splashaway Bay is what we're gonna have in here. So Splashaway Bay is for your really small kids. This section is also complimentary. So if you did not buy the tickets to the Thrill Water Park that you can see towering there in the backdrop, this is a great spot for the kids to get something that, you know, will be complimentary, that's included, and still give them a water park experience. So feel free to bring the kids here, though hopefully they don't stare at Real Water Park wanting to get over into that section, and that's where it gets a little pricey. I do also love, too, that the first book sitting in the bookshelf there was Clifford the Dog, something that I grew up as a child watching. Um, so, or not watching, reading, I should say, and having it read to me. Live Fest are here as well, recognizing that younger children probably don't swim quite as well as some um, other folks might or just need more accommodations that's going to be there for them as well. Here is a side entrance to Thrill Water Park. So if you go, go back down this way, that'll take you to the ship. We're not far away at all. And back to the main entrance of Thrill Water Park. This is the side entrance. You see that there's a Royal Caribbean logo shop here on the side. They oftentimes will have different products than what you're going to find on the cruise I'm not ship. Coming in. So if you want to check that store I'm out, you can only find some pretty go. cool oh, items, want? SPF Thank items, you. things of that nature that you can buy. Here is Thrill Water Park. So thank you to the attendant, by the way, who let me in knowing that I was not gonna be climbing the stairs to this tower here. That is the biggest complaint I hear about the tower, especially if you were someone of a certain age or not in great shape. It's a long ways up there. I think it's 13 flights that you gotta walk all the way to the top. You come down and then 30 seconds later, you gotta walk right back up it. Um, so it can be quite the hall and people wind up, I think being exhausted before they truly got their feel for it. 
On the left-hand side, you're gonna see some other slides that are here. Solo cruisers, I will call out for you, here's one of them that does require multiple passengers. It's one of the intertubes. The slingshot there has to have a certain weight for it to work correctly. So you can't do it as a solo, but you are able to make friends in this section. So if you wanna make some new friends while waiting in line, see if you can hop on with them, um, you can certainly do that. There's also a second snack shack in the water park here that I'm not gonna show you, in addition to the wave pool. So if you um, want the wave pool experience, it's a pool, but you still get the wave action. It's like a combo pool slash ocean. Um, you're gonna be able to get that inside of the Thrill Water Park as well. And here's where I'm gonna start speeding up the video a little bit more, I feel like. Um, because we're going to have a lot of walking. Thank you. So from here, we're going to go Quickest to promise. the hot air balloon and then over to South Beach. And it's a hike. So I'm going to speed up the video a little bit um, after the balloon to show you how far away it really is, but still give you that connectivity so you can kind of see how everything uh, goes. So we're gonna turn now off of the main road there, if you will. The road to the right is gonna be more of a service road that you're not gonna wanna go down, um, but it's gonna take us over to the left. You'll see signs that are gonna direct you to South Beach as well as to the Up, Up and Away balloon. Now the Up, Up and Away balloon, if that's something you're looking at doing recently, I am filming this in late August, 2023. It is closed. So it's gonna be closed for a few months. I don't know what's going on with it, um, but it is not operational at the moment. Hopefully it will be by the beginning of 2024. I feel like they've had, I don't know if a lot of issues with it. It's something that I feel like was really well intentioned, but you need absolute perfect weather in Coco Cay for the up, up and away balloon to go up. It is normally canceled. It's, you know, it does not go up most days. We kind of have a joke for those of us who come here often that will say that if the balloon's up, it is going to be a perfect day at Coco Cay. And they do have wildlife on Coco Cay. So you just saw some chickens that we just passed. They have been there for ages. I've been coming here for, what, eight years at this point. And there's always been chickens on the island. Um, I don't know that they're indigenous. I would doubt that they're indigenous. Um, but you do have chickens on the island as well. Lots of people coming back, having a great time from their cruise that they've been on. We just passed by the restrooms and up here, you're gonna see that we can go to the left, go to the right. To the left is gonna be exactly where the Coco Cay Beach Club is. So we've kind of cut back a little bit now and they've got a brand new entrance that they've made um, to South Beach that I'm gonna walk you through. I don't recommend coming this way. So I hate to say, don't walk to South Beach, but if you wanna go to South Beach, plan in advance to go there and take the tram. If you are walking to South Beach, especially in the summer months, it is hot, it is a long road. And now they have you going off this road here, which is where the tram runs. So I understand they don't want us to get hit by one of the trams and get us out of the way, fine. This is a really uneven path. There's lots of trees in the way and things dangling down. Um, I'm not a super huge fan of this. I kind of miss just walking in the street with the tram, but this is the path that you've got now. So I recommend not doing that. And as you walk through here, they'll have a few signs as well that'll tell you kind of what is the trees and the nature that you are looking at. Um, so make sure that you're stopping, reading those a little bit. There's actually a nature walk further up that I'll show you here in a second. But you walk through here and again, it's a longer walk than you think, right? And there's not a lot of space, especially not great for mobility devices. You do need to be sure-footed to walk this path. And then you're gonna pop out and boom, you are now in South Beach. And so I actually really enjoy South Beach. I think South Beach is probably my favorite area on Coco Cay. The reason that I say that South Beach is my favorite area is because it feels like everything is there. It is kind of its own city, if you will. So everything else is gonna have different things, but here you? you're gonna have I'm you know, doing good. The water beds that you can rent right there. You're gonna have bars, you're gonna have the snack shack, you've got food, you've got the basketball courts. There's everything that you're gonna want is here at South Beach. And it's a little bit more self-contained. It's also got a few features you're not gonna find anywhere else. But because it, you know, it's kind of all-inclusive, people come here, it is the first stop on the second tram that you would get on. A lot of people get off here just cause it's the first place, it's the first beach, it's the easiest to get to from the tram. 
so it does fill up quicker, I think, than some of the other spaces. Though to the left here, it does extend further than what most people think. There's really always some seating down there. You're also going to see the overwater cabanas here. So you may, if you go farther down, be looking through the overwater cabanas to see the water. I don't think that that's too big of an issue, but I do love seeing the overwater cabanas. They are super neat. If you really want to splurge some money, those have skyrocketed in value, but they are an amazing time um, if you want to go there and enjoy yourself. Maybe with a group of people, you can split the cost. It doesn't become too terribly financially costly, um, but if you can afford it and you want to spend some money like that, I think that that is a great time. You've got this, the uh, floating bar out here. I almost said swim up, but that is the floating bar out in the water because it is floating in the water and it does not have electricity. That is the one thing you need to know about it. If you are a frozen drink individual, they don't have power. So they're not gonna be able to give you any daiquiris or anything like that. Everything can be shaken, it can be stirred, they can put ice in it. They will not actually have anything that they can serve you um, that's gonna be a frozen concoction or anything that's gonna require electricity to make. You'll see that they've got volleyball, you saw the basketball court that was there. Um, so plenty of options for you to do here. They've got seating by the snack shack once again. So because you're going to be so close to that snack shack, you will smell those funnel cakes. So if you have a sweet tooth like I do, go for it. Though funnel cakes, because of the grease, I can only have a little bit of it. But they are super good on the island, and some people swear by them. Um, so make sure you are checking that out. You're going to have more of the day beds here. So the South Beach Cabanas are located here. If you have rented one of these, your names are going to be on one of those placards directly beside of the cabana. So you'll know which one is yours. They do have cabana attendants over here that will check you in at the station. Make sure you're getting to the right spot. The pickup for South Beach and drop off is right there as well. So it is very easy to get dropped off. And within a few feet, you can be in your chair. You can be in your cabana enjoying yourself. One of the most hidden bars on this island, one of the newest bars on the island is going to be here at um, this section of South Beach. Not many people come here. It's, you know, it helps with the cabana beds that you just saw there. And there's going to be a beach section on the end, but I feel like most people don't come this way. So if you want to really escape, but still be close to a bar, this is going to be a good spot for you. They've also got their own restrooms over here, more seating, more hammocks. You're probably starting to see why I really like South Beach. It's, you know, you can get away from the crowd. You can be part of the crowd. You can go to the snack shack and get your food, a place that I like to go. There's so much that you can do in South Beach without having to go that terribly far. Another one of the smoking sections here to the right. So anytime you see one of these benches and an umbrella, the ashtray gives it away as well. That's going to be a smoking section that you can hang out with. Here is the nature trail that I talked about earlier. So interestingly, this nature trail, by the way, has been here for years before Coco Cay was renovated, really made what it was. When we used to tender to the island, this nature trail was open and you could walk through it. I have not been through it since they have reopened it to see if they've enhanced it or gone through and you know made the trails a little bit bigger. I imagine it got grown up since it's been closed for several years, but that trail has been there for quite some time. You're going to see even more cabana beds down here on the end. So the island is not short of cabana day beds, which is great. These are priced in dynamic pricing with um, supply and demand. So the more beds they have, the cheaper you might be able to find it because the bigger the ships that are coming here, if you have less beds, it's going to be a lot more pricey to do that. There's also a sandbar that's going to make a horseshoe all the way around here, which is really fun to walk when it's low tide, especially when you have a super moon or a full. All right, so that is perfect day at Coco Cay. That was the full walking tour. There is so much to see here. I've covered a lot of it. I didn't hit everything. If there's something else you want to see, guess what? I'm coming back. So let me know down in the comments what you want to learn more about and happy to share that with you. All right, everybody. This is Brandon, the Weekend Cruiser. Hoping to see you on a Weekend Cruise soon.